Hello! How you doing, everybody? Um, uh, this is, uh, it's kind of late, because it's already been past, it's Sunday, uh, but I, I was off and, uh, taking care of some business with my, my brother, uh, he had, uh, surgery, and I just wanted to make sure that he was okay, and sorry about this being late, it'll be brief, uh, I had an idea what I would like to do, and I'm gonna make it really brief. So anyway, uh, this is uh, January 29th, which is late, and God promises his presence, uh, and hopefully we're on schedule for uh, uh, next Sunday. But anyway, um, let's all bow our heads. Father God, we ask to forgive me for uh, not putting out the video the last time, and then, Father, we ask you to touch each and every one and open their minds and have an understanding that you're present in each and every one's life that cares to have them in in their lives. And we just thank you for all those that accepted you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Uh, God promises present January 29th. Again, it's late. Just want to read and then tell you a little bit of something about it. He says, Do not be afraid, land of Judith. This is uh, Joel, which is another prophet, uh, who wrote this this uh, this particular passage, they think, is what I, I came up and so uh, you know, it's it's a pretty, I say there's educated guess. Let me start over. Do not be afraid, land of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid, you wild animals, for the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruits. The fig trees in the vineyards, their riches. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring, rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will be overflowed with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locusts of the young locusts, the other locusts, and the locusts swarm. My great army that I sent among you, you will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, that there is no others. Never again will my people be ashamed. First of all, I want to say this, uh, all, every human being on this planet is God's people that, that cares to accept him. It is a scripture, God is love, that's in the Bible. And like I've always said, we always try to put hands and feet and try to humanize God. <laughs> that's kind of true in some sense, but it's not. Because there's more to that if we open our minds, you know, to this. Because I said, you know, I've been looking at a lot of, um, uh, what you call it, uh, atheists. And there's people that don't believe there's a God. Some people call God by different names. Because I was confused with who Yahweh was. It's a Jewish name for Yahweh, God, English God. And, you know, they have different languages. You're going to hear different names. Okay. This is a thought. God is love. And just think of this. If there's no love at all in the universe, there's no love here on the planet, so nobody cares about one another, anything like that, then I would tell you, I would believe there was no God. So, I'm proposing to you to think about this and pray about this. That who God is, is love. When you see someone caring about somebody, because you remember he said, love ye one another as I have loved you. That's what Jesus told the disciples. And he also left in the scriptures, we should love our neighbors as we would ourselves. And I'm pretty sure we wouldn't want to do any damage to ourselves. So now, if there was no love in the world, there's no God. So that stands to say, mathematically, if there was no evil in the universe, then there's no Satan. And we know there's evil here. We turn on our nose, and that's all, all the proof it is. But if you want to say it's something else, that's fine. That's what Satan does. Likes chaos and confusion. That's what he likes. Or as some people say, how do you know it's a he? It's she. I, I'm not getting all that confused. 
But anyway, what we just read in the scriptures, and he says, you ought to be afraid. Just imagine this. Well, I ask you a question. Not imagine this. Ask you this question. Those that have believed that there's a God, then how is it, like this subject said, God promises his presence. How is God present in your life? And that's what I'm talking about in my life. And, and here he was telling in this, this uh, 22nd verse, he says, do not be afraid, referring to the wild animals. We shouldn't be afraid. And I'm going to tell you why. I, I was afraid. I was told so many different things. But I'm going to tell you that God's been walking with me. And I know people say, oh, you, you know, you, you're, you're crazy. But anyway, this is how I see God walking with me. I was a man that in my marriage that I have now, it's 40-something years, so God walked with me here because he pointed my wife out that that was my wife. It was very clear, and to this day, so far, God didn't lie because it's going on 40-something years, and I'm not planning on walking away from my wife at all. Matter of fact, there's a podcast that we're going to be on on my my, my kids, and it says um, uh, it's a book about marriage be hard. Yeah, it's a challenge. But uh, we're going to be talking about divorce, uh, and it's March or something. The wife, he'll clear that up. She's going to clear it up when she comes back. But but God has been walking with me in my marriage. I was concerned about kids because for a while I didn't think I was going to have a son. I have three daughters and one son. I'm so happy to have, you know, a son. And he's he's a challenge. Uh, I would have to say I have four great kids. Are they flawless? No. But just with the prayers, because uh, things I thought was hopeless, but with prayers and just keep working with God, some of my kids went over the edge and I pulled them back uh, with the love of God and with the help of God. That's his presence. When I say his presence, to give you a more uh, exciting thing, I mean, not exciting, a, a point where people said I, I got lucky. No, it's not luck. It's not anything. Yes, I did put in the work. But I was praying all the time that God would help give me insight on in an accounting class. I didn't think I was capable of, of doing anything in accounting. I didn't think I was capable in, in Citizens College. As a matter of fact, just, uh, I know his presence, he was with me because this one particular, I'll, I'll tell you about this, it was an accounting class. And accounting to me was very difficult. I had a tough time with it. It's even thinking about it. Uh, it, it was just challenging. And I didn't think I was capable of it. I was already mentally told that I was not college material. So all these defeated things. But I knew I was motivated because I had to take care of my family. So I took the time and I prayed about it, and God gave me permission to go to college. So you have to build a relationship with knowing when God is talking to you. But anyway, he made it really clear because... Not only that, my very first semester, I took accounting one. And I was clueless. I just so happened I found some people, because I was working at TRW, I found some people that had accounting, that graduated. So I went and talked to them, and they were telling me all the different things, you know, because, you know, what, what's that again? It says assets equals liability plus ownership. And it has to be balanced. And the fascinating thing about it is that I studied. I mean, around the clock. I mean, I pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. And I really studied. And I studied hard. And you got to remember what I'm trying to tell you. I was already defeated by what man has told me. My teachers had told me. But everybody, I was not college material. I'm not capable of this. I was expecting this to get a degree so I can get a better job. I said, as long as I didn't have my GPA on it, I had a piece of paper that I could present to people and say, I, I at least went through college. And the fascinating thing to me, I was praying and praying, and I took that exam. Matter of fact, I said the Lord's Prayer before I took that exam, and I was just stressing out. Anyway, as I recall that day, uh, I was getting ready to turn my paper in, because I, you know, the, the teacher asked for them, so I was walking to the front, and something says to me, uh-uh, there's one problem you need to change. And I sat down, I looked at it, and I changed the erase it real quick and changed it to what, what it needed to be. This is okay. So everything is fine. I said, great. So 
I was expecting maybe a C plus or B on there because I was like, it, 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 you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, I was praying about it. And also I want to tell you about this too. The presence with it. In the class, I asked a lot of questions in the class too. Not only just people helping me through it, talking me through it, and, and I was studying, but I also heard people that were sitting in behind me and the questions I was asking, I heard these comments. That was a dumb question. Why are you asking that? You should know that. I'm hearing these people talking under their breath. And I'm hearing that. Wow. I'm hearing all kinds of things. People's, why is he always interrupting the class? Well, that's what a teacher's for. To ask questions if you don't understand something. So anyway, we took the midterm. That's what I was talking about. Anyway, as we took the midterm, and I turned it back in, and this instructor that came, uh, that was teaching it, uh, he had told us that he come from a semester, you know, a system, and and the school I went to was, it was on a quarter system. And but he didn't have time to scale it down because he had more, he had more time. But he said, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take care of that. Uh, you know, and, you know, great on the curve. So okay. And then when he came back, the test came back, and he said one thing. He said he sorted them, and and from the highest to the lowest, uh, you know, lowest in the class. So he says, but he said he was surprised because he said he found six perfect papers. I said, woo, that's nice, but I'm waiting on the B's and the C's. So he was calling, and everybody said, mm, okay. Everybody said, okay. And, you know, on a six one, guess who they called? Me. I said, What? And and as at that time, again, God said, hmm, see, I told you it was time for you to go back. I'm just letting you know it is time. It was a sign. Okay? Then after that, I hear, uh, after that, when the rest of the, the term finished, the second half, I hear these comments behind me. Well, I wish I was brave enough to ask that question because I'm glad he asked because he cleared it up for me. So people now was looking at me. So, it, it, you can, you know, you can apply a lot of things. But the point of this, God's promise, his presence. It's true. He helped me with my family. He helped me when trying things with my kids, my parents. My mother gave me very good advice. My dad is also as well. And it's one thing is raising the four kids. And I don't care what Dr. Spark or any of these people, they think they know everything. My mother told me one thing. Before you discipline your children, you should pray about it. Calm down. Do not transfer your anger on your children. Make sure you're calm and you pray about it and ask for guidance. And when I'm saying his presence, God's been in my presence in my life as far as occupation, my career, uh, finances. Because even when in uh, 2008, and when the, the housing and everything crashed, it was back when I was working for a company that before I w worked with him, God, he said, well, I'm going to tell you, he said, if you decide to go for work for this company, ooh, excuse me, I want to tell you this, you need to start downsizing now. Start working on that now. Start cutting. And that's what I want you to do. And I'm so thankful that, you know, what you're saying is in the present. That's the relationship I have with God. And I'm so happy that I did, because through the 2008 and all these crises that are going on, still, God's been walking with me and the family. I have a great family, and uh, we'll, we'll put it this way. just want to say this, that maybe some people uh, maybe don't like what I'm saying, because I've been getting uh, you know, some interesting response, good ones and bad ones, but... I'm going to tell you this. This is my belief. He's been walking with me all the time. He's been taking care of the family. And it's also, too, I'm looking at it from the other way. Because, you know, they say, oh, give it on to God because you're doing great. This is what they say the athletes do. But let me tell you something. I am mentally praying and, and preparing because who knows? It could be people out there just listen, don't like what I'm saying, and want to cause a hardship on me just to say, okay, see, we're going to see how you can handle if things got bad. I'm going to tell you right now. 
I'm not sure how I'm going to handle it, but I'm, I'm sure praying about it now that if it does happen, that guess what? That I don't want to give ever walk away from God. It's just like getting mad at one of my family members and saying, nah, I'm mad at you because things are going bad. No, we're not serving God like, you know, he, he's, he's God when things are going good. But when things are bad, uh-uh. Look at this passage. Do not be afraid, you wild animals. God loves us. The sun shines on the good and the bad. The black, the white, the red, any human being, any animal, any plant, God he will shine the sun on. But see, I mean, the sun shines on them. The rain rains on them. They don't miss people because it wouldn't be funny that it would shine on just only the righteous and not and the unjust. Then we would know who is, who is evil and who's not. But that's not for it. We're all God's children. We got to understand that. Then that other one, it says, uh, he says, never again, in, in this uh, last verse, not the last verse, the 26, he says, never again will my people be shamed. I'm so happy for Dr. King for civil rights. I'm happy for being freed. I mean, like they had June the 19th. So happy for all those that, that looks like me that fought for where I can stand here and say this. And it's one thing is, each and every human being, you do know what's right and what's wrong. No matter what color you are, who you are, God walks with all of his children. As a matter of fact, I have an idea that, it was a picture my brother shot when he was in Africa, that I'm going to put in the display back here. And, and about that picture, what incited me is that, uh, you know, you want to call African American, Black Americans, uh, however you want to state it. It's one thing is I want to say this to you. God's been very good. You know, I'm glad my ancestors are out of slavery. I'm glad I have the tolerance where my my white brothers and sisters that hate me because of the color of my skin or whatever I'm about. I don't know why they hate me. I, I don't even understand it. But God it deals with his children. And it's one thing is, I'm not ashamed. Like you said, my people are not. I'm not ashamed. I'm going to keep trying my best to do the right thing. That's what my plans are. And, you know, people are going to say, yes. I, I already imagine, you know, you can turn around. You can try to take the wealth. Just a matter of fact, the story of Job. That's what it, the story of Job. That's the visual he had. That could happen to me. It could. But it's one thing is that I want to tell you, if anything else, God's been present in my life. He pointed me toward my economics, what I should do. He also pointed toward a wife and great kids. I mean, I can tell you all kinds of stories, but I'm not going to that. But God's been present in my life. That's why I believe he is there. Now, my fellow brothers in Christ, I'm going to tell you this so you can understand. It's not for the unbelievers. This is for the ones that believe. I know there's a God. But for the unbelievers, I just believe because I'm not going to sit here and try to prove that God, you know, just what if and all these what if things. There's no point in going through that. If anything, I'm going to stop on this. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and Titus, I believe it's the third chapter. Read those, those chapters. You'll see where I'm coming from. As far as knowledge and everything, I don't know there is everything, and I wouldn't have the time to be. Uh, Elijah, because that's what he did. That's what Joshua, they did it full time. And I'm not a full time prophet or anything like that. Just telling you the truth. We should take the time to love one another. As the Jesus said to the disciple, as I have loved you. So read about Jesus. But we should love people as we would like to be. So in other words, respect people how you would like to be respected. And, and closing, uh, that's a God promises presence. But I also want to tell you that the visible lady of faith is Coming back this coming week. Yay! So I just sit here and <laughs> just trying to fill in because I just wanted to keep going, you know, with her. But I, I will come on, you know, with her. And and hopefully, because we're, we're just trying to get people to think. Think. Ask questions. Don't let anybody tell you what you should do. Because, you know, all these, these you know, there's different kind of ministers. I don't want to criticize them or anything like that. It's not my job. I'm not a judge of them. But we need to think for ourselves because we're going to have to answer to God for ourselves. 
not what the pastors, or these preachers, or anybody saying. We should hear the word, and then we should apply it, and we're going to be judged on our own merits. So the visible lady of faith is coming back. So like, what does it say? Like, subscribe, hit the notification, keep tracking. Thank you for all those supported us. And we're trying to, to do better. We're trying to change our equipment. And, you know, uh, we just don't want to give up on anybody. So anyway, like, subscribe, do all those good things. And, uh, and welcome back to Visible Lady when she comes back next week. Thank you.